very warm welcome to the fourth open house session on DEPA training. Also, we refer to it as DPI for AI. Uh, in this session, we are going to be discussing the basic strategy that would make India an AI nation. Why are we doing it at the end? We are doing it at the end, although this strategy has informed everything that we have done so far. We wanted to lay the groundwork for this discussion by covering the technology in the first open house uh, session that we did, talking about how the <clears throat> modelers, which are training data consumers, uh, you know, talk to training data providers and what are their incentives and how do they make that dialogue happen, collaboration happen in the second open house video. Then how regulation, uh, what is the thinking around regulation in the third open house video. And now in a sense, we are unveiling or revealing the, <clears throat> the strategy that has underpinned all of these conversations. So that is why we are here. Now, of course, anything that you do is motivated by a desire to make a difference. That desire to make a difference actually usually is personal. It is visceral. It is emotional. And I'm going to request Uma Kant to talk to us about what brings us to this point today. Thanks, Sharath, uh, for having me here. Uh, one of the big reasons for me personally is uh, I was born in Bhopal, you know, and uh, unfortunately, it's a, a beautiful city, but it is known for the gas tragedy that happened there. Uh, you know, and we were there, I mean, it was a bit of a, a challenge at that point of time, but more than 15,000 people died. Half a million people got affected. And why? Because we had no idea what was going on in that uh, you know, uh, Union Carbide uh, factory. What was the gas that was actually getting manufactured? Very few people knew about it. And when it got released, people did not know what was the antidote. And of course, it's been immortalized now. The chain of sequence in this Netflix series is going around railway men. And so you can all, you know, check out and see. But, the you know, the, the disaster that struck that night in 1984, you know, the pangs of that are still felt even being now. And I suspect that if we, I mean, AI is going to be a massive revolutionary technology, which is going to reshape this whole century. And if we don't, you know, play with it, if we, if we don't have a say in it, if we are just bystanders, consumers of it, we might be, you know, rehashing or rewording this kind of tragedy in some other name. And we won't even know what would have actually struck us because, you know, AI is going to power, you know, 60 to 70% of the workflows in future. So it's very critical for us to actually take a stand on it. How do we grow, uh, you know, such technology here so that we understand it deeply, what it entails. We grow it as per our, you know, social norm, uh, as per our requirements and as per our worldview. And it is critical that we take that stand. Uh, of course, it's a lot more easier to say that, okay, we will just become consumers uh, and we will play on top of it. But, you know, this is a very fundamental technology. It is not just going to impact, uh, you know, the field of AI itself, but it is also going to impact things which are going to be around it, whether it is genetics, whether it is, you know, fusion, whether it is, uh, you know, space exploration, whether it's the other kind of technology that are going to be there. So it's it's not just economic. Of course, the economic incentive is very strong. $15.7 trillion of new economic value uh, could be the way we could actually leapfrog and turn our society into a developed, uh, you know, society. But uh, the socio, uh, uh, the other reasons that I see are also quite compelling that we should take a stack at it. Uh, we should actually, you know, have uh, in some way uh, a part in growing this uh, revolution together. Absolutely. So this is a very visceral, deep-rooted motivation that is there. I think we are combining that motivation with what we have learned in a way over the last 20 or so years, right? And uh, perhaps even 30 years. And, and in these 30 years, there have been three times before where, you know, <clears throat> many of us have come together to take India into a mainstream part of an industry. So let's very quickly talk about what have we learned there. 
you know, we learned from the IT services industry that you needed a jugalbandi, a partnership between an ecosystem game plan and a company game plan. And when there were many companies that were leveraging the ecosystem game plan, you created winners. And so this is the model that has worked very well for us in the IT services industry. It happened largely because the whole ecosystem game plan was about occupying this quadrant about low cost, high quality. And, you know, Software Engineering Institute in Carnegie Mellon University gave us the impetus to do that. Uh, the second time this has happened is with SaaS in India. And there again, there was an ecosystem game plan that emerged. How can we take something which is a constraint, which is a liability, and turn it into an asset? And a very effortful and organized effort actually took place to make desk marketing and selling an asset in India. You know, you marketing was a liability earlier. And on the back of that, we have a thriving SaaS industry, especially in the mid-market. Desk marketing and selling works very well. <clears throat> We've created US IPO companies. You know, companies are generally doing very well. The, the future is very promising. So, <clears throat> so then we applied that and said, hey, if you have to innovate, our startups have to innovate, they have to innovate for middle India, for Bharat. And there... The liability was that being able to access the millions, hundreds of millions of people uh, digitally was near impossible. You know, to get them to participate in economic activity was near impossible. To personalize solutions to them was near impossible. And all that was then addressed through digital public infrastructure, India stack, that was created to make that happen. So what was now a liability, a constraint, has become an asset. And now DPI is <clears throat> being talked about and uh, all across the world and many other countries are thinking of adopting it as well. So I wanted to share with the audience that this same thinking of what part of the AI ecosystem can actually go from being a liability to an asset, uh, from being a constraint to a big enabler is what has guided our thinking about the ecosystem game plan for AI. So in the, in the later part of this conversation, we will give you an inventory of you know, what those uh, dimensions are and where is it that we think we can make a difference and where is it we think you know, we can make a difference, but you know, maybe not to the same extent of turning it into an asset, but at least neutralizing the liability that we have. So let's start first with data. So Gaurav, may I request you to talk a little bit about that? Share your yeah. Thanks, Sharath. Thank, Thank you for having me here. Uh, it's not a secret that data is one of the biggest ingredients to, to create these models. I mean, it is, it is not now. I mean, ever since uh, we started working on ML, data has been a most important cog in the wheel. It's just that when we come to very large models, the importance of data is, if anything, gone up exponentially. If you see what has happened in the past year or so, most of the models that have come out, they, they are based on publicly available web data. They try to mimic whatever is available freely on the web and, and, and create utilities, create models, which are, which are doing very interesting, very useful things at large. As, as we, you know, in, in this past year, another thing that we have seen is this sort of the, the benefits we are getting from this public data, they are, uh, you know, sort of saturating here in some way. What I mean by that, like, you know, the, this data is, is NPD, there's non-personal data. And once you have, uh, you know, you train your models, yes, they try to mimic what is there, but a lot of data is actually locked behind, you know, in, in, as internal data in companies like Tesla or proprietary data in many other consumer companies. Every company, when they serve their customers, every interaction that a customer has, that is the data. That's not publicly available. It will not be wrong to say that the data, which is proprietary, which is internal to uh, companies, it's even larger than the publicly available data. And it is, it is more aligned to human interactions as they happen while consumers are uh, you know, out and about doing their businesses with these companies. Now, when we are talking about the ecosystem play here, uh, we need our ecosystem, the Indian AI ecosystem, 
to somehow have easy access, easy privacy preserving access to this proprietary data. That is that is like one of the you know one of the very primary ways we can we can give a push the necessary push for our AI companies to actually do well in this otherwise very competitive landscape. And that's what actually DPR for AI aims to do. What do we do here? The data is proprietary. It is not publicly available. Indian legal system doesn't allow for you know two party contract that can be you know maintained uh, over time to to sort of make sure that the privacy is maintained. So what DPI for AI does is it allows people or companies who have this proprietary data to actually share it with with AI ecosystem developers who can build this new age models in a very privacy preserving safe way. The, 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 the platform allows for uh, you know, easy contractual obligations through smart contracts. It allows for privacy preserving, preservation through differential privacy. And it allows for uh, you know, even the host environment cannot get access to data or IP of the, of the model through confidential computing. It, we believe here at iSpirit that these, this, this TPI for AI collaboration framework, data collaboration framework, provides the necessary access to data which is not otherwise available to, to make, to, to sort of give the necessary push to our AI ecosystem to build models which reflect, you know, the, 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 the humans, human, human uh, sensibilities in India. And, and thus creating models which are far, far superior than what can be made in the absence of this data. So, Gaurav, you are saying that, uh, and this has been out for six months. It's been in the yeah. public domain. People can read about it at depa.world. And, you know, the feedback that we've got is that people are rallying around this idea that the use of this will give the developers, the modelers, access to continental scale data sets in a privacy preserving way that they cannot have anywhere else in the world, right? Exactly. And your contention is that this will be a leg up. This will oh, be yeah. today and this will be a leg up for people who are developing models here in India. And because this would be, continental data sets are going to be very important as we go. India, India in a way reflects uh, many other countries around the world. India is like an amalgamation of, of, of a Western country and an African country and an Asian country, right? So, so what we build here is not just the models for India, but actually they will reflect many other nations around the world, probably all the nations. So that is the beauty of the diversity that we have in India. Right. So this is out there. People can study that. A little more kind of uh, area that needs a leap of faith is what Sunu, you often talk about, which is that, look, uh, India will also be... Uh, the best jurisdiction for responsible AI. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, thank you, Sharad. That's a good question. And the question, traditionally, we have been looking at regulation as a hurdle, a liability that a product builder has to cross at some point after the product is built. And in the case of AI, as Gaurav very elaborately explained, right, Privacy was the liability around data. Data was there, it was locked, and it was privately locked, and how do you make bring value out of it? The techniques that Gaurav illustrated used technology and a very lightweight legal framework, a blending of techno technology and legal into a techno-legal framework to liberate the data and make data an asset. Exactly the same way, the whole regulatory framework that ensures that something is safe and secure and uh, you know for good for people to use the responsible ai part of it we believe that by putting it into a techno legal framework we are able to ensure the same phenomenon that is the crux of the matter how do we do it by using a framework that allows liability to be tracked all the way from the end user the user who is interacting with the application, AI application, and their data is flowing into the model. 
all the way to the model, through the model, to the data that fed the model and created the model, including the data providers who supplied individual data elements to the model. So the technology allows us to create a liability chain. And this liability chain is on par with the liability chain we have created for GST in India, the tax liability chain, which is very complex in India, but we have managed it. Exactly a similar liability chain is constructed here. And this liability chain provides a very lightweight environment for people, model builders, data providers, data set aggregators, all of them to interact in a safe and responsible way inside the framework. And the last part of it is that this technology framework, because we have control of the technology from end to end, can also ensure that model builders do not monopolize their data or they don't take the private data and lock it down. And through various electronic contracts, if they have agreed that they will contribute the data back to the TDP for general good, it will happen. It does not need to be externally enforced. This is what we envisage that the regulatory framework does. And we are sure that this regulatory framework is a growth model. And many people who are listening to this probably will not fully appreciate the liability chain that you're talking about for GST, where, you know, some seller, you know, some product goes from, let's say, from cotton to yarn, yarn to cloth, cloth to shirt okay. and then being sold on the front end, you know, yeah, there is a liability chain uh, in, involved here for collection of taxes. So the tax is being collected by the next person in the chain in a way that keeps everybody accountable. Right. And this is completely an electronic approach yeah. and that has resulted in significant improvement in our revenue collection and therefore our revenue uh, uh, tax revenue uh, as a percentage of the economy has been growing very substantially. Right. It's now, you know, gone from, uh, you know, low teens to now uh, 21, 22%. So this is something that has worked. And what you are right. saying essentially is that our thinking is to think about those liability chains. And these kind right. of arrangements are probably the best way to deal with a complex adaptive system, which is That's AI right. exactly. dealing with. Because it That's adapts exactly. itself also very quickly and Absolutely. it's electronic in nature it is it it is going to allow uh, people to be held responsible yeah. and therefore good outcomes will emerge not only for privacy but also right. for safety also for copyright right and, and exactly and then exactly. also gives the antitrust commission the ability to manage and make sure that we don't have whales a few monopolies that dominate exactly. so is that exactly. a fair way to that, is, that is that is exactly right because what this what the whole framework allows us to do is that it allows us to monitor it allows us to measure how the ai models are doing it allows us to manage it end to end and that ensures that all the problems of monopolization through uh, you know locked in data monopolization through copyright violations deep fakes all these fit into the framework, making the world a very safe place, right? Is and that is why I believe that our jurisdiction will be the safest of all. So, so no, people will worry this is a big brother approach? Or... Oh, it is true. So, so it yeah. is not a big brother approach. It is not a big brother approach. Because yes, it actually that. empowers people to do their piece of it very well. Correct. Exactly. And, and it gives the regulator, and it is privacy preserving by design, because that's technical legal right. in nature. Business secrecy is preserved by design. And right. yet it builds a system where people can be held accountable because there is tracking of what role have they played that in, right. in and, delivering and, you to the people. Right. Yeah. And provided they follow the script that we have written, the simplified script, it's very easy for them. That is what makes it so powerful that regulations are there and regulations are as natural as breathing. Right. You build the models following the principles. It's done. So is it fair to say that perhaps the electronic contracts that underpin this may be the most important use of electronic contracts that we know in the world so far? <laughs> yes, because as uh, Umakant was saying, this is foundation. This touches everything. So generally contracts are touch a certain part of business and most human beings do not see the contracts. But here in this case, because every human being is the source of the data. Everyone who interacts with it is essentially interacting in a contractual way with the system. So the validity of those contracts, the lightness and enforceability of those contracts is significantly important to growing the ecosystem. Yeah. Umakant, if I may come to you, 
Now, if we have to think also about talent and then compute, and, and a proxy for compute often is capital, right? And tell us a little bit about that. Uh, you know, uh, are we able to make the same pole vault or leapfrog that we are doing with data and, and the regulatory approach uh, for talent? Or do we even need to do that for talent and compute? You know, where do we stand on those two dimensions? Your thoughts on that, please. Hmm. So I think if I unpack it a bit, and as you pointed out, right, like if you have to build AI, what do we need? What are the basic building blocks? We need data. And I think we have some way to unlock, I mean, turn a constraint into, uh, you know, something that we could actually have as an advantage. Uh, then we have the glue, which is the regulation, right? Then, of course, the other pillars are talent, compute, and capital, right? And right now, of course, I think we have talent availability. I think we... Indians are learning quite fast. I mean, uh, you know, the 11% of the, uh, you know, the top AI researchers are of Indian origin. Of course, we need to figure out how we can, uh, you know, create a way in which they can play in India as well. Uh, I see the, 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 the holy grail of, you know, India's advantage is going to be, in some sense, uh, that we have supermarket of problems, okay? We have problems literally about everything, right? And, you know, whether we talk about financial inclusion, we have a challenge. I mean, we have 300 million people who have just now got bank accounts that don't even have, you know, banking configured to them. You know, healthcare, you know, we have a massive challenge. You know, you know this doctor to patient ratio is one is to 1700, right? We are talking about lawyers, I mean, uh, and judges, you know, we have a exponentially lower number of judges that we have to give a huge you know, backlog of cases huge backlog i mean more than uh, you know uh, it's, it's very difficult for people to even imagine like 40 million cases are backlog so if i were to say we have definitely you know have this supermarket of problem which makes us desperate right so we have data and we have desperation right we have i mean we have no other way to solve these problems right so we have to adopt a leapfrog solution, right? Where we, and that is where the scale that AI offers in terms of solving these problems, actually, you know, allows us to be probably the the AI nation that you know we are talking about, right? Having said that, uh, we also see that there are very serious constraints today. If I look at compute, you know, people are hardly having even thousand GPU clusters in India right now, right? as compared to China, which is like 2 million plus, you know, GPUs that are there. Or US, it's like crazy, right? Uh, in terms of capital, I mean, US has invested 35 times more capital behind AI, right? So so these are big, real challenges, right? So even though we have this opportunity, we have the supermarket of problems, we have data, we definitely have talent, right? Uh, in terms of uh, you know, if I look at, uh, you know, uh, the recent survey that came out from LinkedIn, uh, you know, 45% of all AI talent now might be in India because people, 26, 27% of these guys are learning on Coursera, the highest demography on Coursera. And they are, you know, very young, uh, 3 million engineers we pass out each year. Even if a million are good, you know, we have a substantial amount of firepower there. I mean, if you talk about the layer that talks, uh, you know, con connects, uh, you know, software to hardware and GPUs, CUDA, the largest body of CUDA developers are in India, right? So, so talent is there. Uh, supermarket of problems are here, right? Uh, definitely, we have this, uh, you know, techno-legal regulation, which could turn data into an advantage. So I think we have three pillars, which are, you know, on the good side. What we need to do, and I think that's where I think government is, uh, you know, very important that, you know, they're taking some steps on the compute mission that, uh, you know, Prime Minister Modi uh, G talked about, uh, where they are looking at how do they, you know, uh, uh, accelerate the industry in providing more compute by, you know, uh, offering subsidies or, uh, you know, people to set up more compute. Uh, then there is a, another uh, perspective where, uh, you know, from a ground up approach, like how do we literally do something like SETI, right? Uh, search for extra trade. I mean, is there a way to crowdsource compute? Of course, it's very, very young. And I think at this point of time, it's more like a, you know, experiment or sort. Uh, whether this would really allow us to train large models and, you know, do inference at scale remains to be seen. Uh, having said that, I think these are, uh, steps are very encouraging. Similarly, in capital, uh, just like the way Startup Fund of Fund, you know, allowed 
so many you know uh, venture funds to come up and then they funded these startups which then became the assets in which fdi and other uh, you know uh, money could come in from uh, outside india i think there's a digital innovation fund that is uh, you know people are planning about and i think if that can be accelerated it could be uh, you know really interesting but my sense is that the capital will follow if we can you know demonstrate that yes the data is hanging in on the positive side we have the talent aligned to ai and of course the supermarket of problems and the desperation that we call right i mean we i mean this is the this is the place on earth which is going to adopt ai at scale because that's very critical if i look at you know aadhar and and how it got adopted at scale allowed us to you know reduce the cost of access right so if we if we talk about human alignment of ai right and 1.4 billion uh, you know humans actively seeking the intervention of ai and they in turn are uh, aligning it to our uh, you know uh, perspective and a point of view what it will mean is that it will actually uh, uh, in some sense not just going to be useful for only india and as gora was talking about it right if human aligned ai safe ai uh, can be built at the lowest cost because to serve 1.4 billion people you have to really bring it down and that's where i feel that the new innovation in compute are going to actually happen in india because if i am talking about intelligent per watt right i mean today we have a human brain which is working at 20 watt right and equivalent uh, you know the super clusters that we are building uh, you know 10000 gpus 20 megawatt right it's a massive gap right so if we have to make ai really uh, available to everyone to be used in a democratized manner then we have to basically bring it closer to 20 watt right and and that is where i feel that if we are able to align this uh, talent compute capital data in form of these massive ai moonshots right which we could not just take for ourselves but also for the globe uh, this could be a completely different playbook that we could see so you know in a way you're making an argument if i summarize you you are almost telling the people who have capital inside india or outside cap india and say pay attention to india you're saying india has used this movie before we needed to solve the sdg goals and we used digital infrastructure to do it in a way nobody could conceive of and imagine and now that has become the example for the world now we are saying we have a need to solve our hard problems some of them are sdg problems and some of them are beyond sdg we need to solve the hard problems and the same group of people have applied similar thinking of saying what will it take to have a ecosystem game plan that we over the next 10 years make india an ai nation and that involves turning unlocking continental scale data in a privacy preserving way it involves thinking about liability chains in an electronic way that will make this the best jurisdiction for developing safe responsible ai best jurisdiction in the world for doing that it involves recursive use of ai to generate the ai talent that we may need <laughs> to accelerate what we already have right i mean we have this deep researchers and then we need to accelerate it as we go a recursive use of ai to make that happen is very yeah. important and and if we are able to do this in the service of humanity which india is planning to do in a big way with support from public policy which we expect to have as we go forward if you are an investor outside india you should be investing in india and uh, if you are an investor in india you should be investing in ai say. in india this is really the 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 message that we wanted to leave behind with people we wanted to share with you there's something cooking here you are the first set of people who are hearing about it this is the first time ever that we have in a public fora that we have discussed this something that gorov how long has it been in the works at least for four years is that right yeah yeah i think it was And, about four years ago four yes years, yeah. so it's been in the works for for four years and this is the first time we are talking to all of you in a public fora in this fashion and why are we doing that because it is time to now bring you into the loop and make you part of this journey so if you are an investor think about india seriously and if you are a researcher and you want to build 
the world's best model and grow rich doing that come to india again this is where ai models will be used and this is the place this will be the best place for you to come and work and build the next generation models as we go forward so with that i i think we've covered almost everything i'm going to go back uh, to gorav you sunu umakant any closing words that you may have uh, uh, before we wind up so i mean a uh, very quick word i mean one is that i think you summed it up so amazingly well and you know i i live in bangalore uh, and uh, if you know a, a self driving car could work in silkwood junction it will work everywhere so i i think ai is a this massive tool that we have got and we should use it for solving in some way planet scale challenges like climate change i mean we are getting old fairly quickly as a society we will be short by 2 billion people uh, as you talked about you know ai for sdgs right sustainable development goals uh, ai for building a new kind of society i mean and for first time ubi at scale could be a possibility now if we could actually enable it and eliminate the birth lottery we could actually have a completely new era of humanity so i think of course you know people are talking about oh ai is going to be super dangerous i mean we are already living under some massive intelligence right which hasn't killed us so definitely this is not going to kill us but uh, you know natural stupidity could so how do we you know uh, step away from that and really apply uh, this massive tool to solve the problems that it actually requires to be solved and i think india is the place yeah so i'll just summarize in a way right in my own words what i think sharad uma khan sunu have already said i, I think it's like a perfect place you know we have supermarket problems uh, at scale we cannot uh, sort of hack our way in through it you need data dpf or ai allows you to get access to proprietary data which is necessary not just to build great models but also to build models which are safe which are which are which align with human sensibilities then you have a very supportive regulatory system and the talent and uh, capital it already exists or it will get attracted to all these things right? so it's it's literally a no brainer to be here whether you are a investor whether you are a researcher whether you are someone who wants to build products on ai you know this is this is the place uh, there is no better way to put it so no you have the last word uh, uh, what i would say is that if a if a system is to grow it must have demand something that demands the growth and raw materials that supply the growth and what umakant and gaurav and sharad have been talking about is that in this ecosystem both exist in plenty there are numerous problems of demand and a lot of data and the whole framework that we are talking about is intended to funnel one to the other and connect it and create the feedback loops which is what really causes systems to grow well so i think you know i would summarize by saying that this is one of the best systems that you can grow ai in ai will probably flower here more than anywhere else thank you so much thank you